All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here, and I am coming to you with some pretty exciting news. As you can read from the video description, the title, and the thumbnail, and all that stuff, we're going to be talking about Men of War Assault Squad 2, which is vastly approaching rather quickly. Um, so, first announcement is that the launch date for Men of War Assault Squad 2 is February 20th, 2014. The closed beta for Men of War Assault Squad 2 will come out, I believe, January 16th, which is a Thursday. Um, if you're viewing this day of, or if you're viewing it later, I'm filming this on Monday, January 13th. So it's going to be available in three days from the original posting of this video. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, how do you get into the closed beta? Well, check the video description below. Um, one of the ways I found out there may be more, and if you know of more, please let us all know in the comments. But if you buy into Call to Arms, which is a modern version of basically a modern take on Men of War, um, they have a Kickstarter program which you can buy into. And then one of the perks from buying into Call to Arms is that you will get into the closed beta, which seems like it will last about a month and a week because that's how long from January 13th till February 20th about a month a week and a day anyway let's talk about Men of War Assault Squad 2 yep it's coming out February 20th and as I said closed beta in about three days from the original posting one thing that I'm really excited about is this experience system which they've talked about a little bit in their developer diaries if you want to read it for yourself that link also will be available in the video description below but basically it's changing things up. From my first experiences with Men of War and Men of War Assault Squad, if you come in late into the game, I came in a couple years after launch, it has a very difficult learning curve because it's a very unique style of RTS gameplay. Um, it's my favorite because it's so unique, but the downside of this unique factor is that it can be kind of difficult for new players to get into and you know take a hand at it because you can jump in and there's many veteran players out there and when the player base went down late in you know in the past couple years noobs going in have a tough time well since at launch basically what will happen is you have to unlock unique units as you go now I want to reiterate one key point in that this is for multiplayer only and not single player and for multiplayer in terms of matchmaking and competitive play. If you don't like this system, as the developer, developer diary clearly states, you can simply go into custom battles. Furthermore, the experience system does not affect mod gameplay. Now, a quick aside, one of the things I'm very excited for is how Men of War Assault Squad has always been pretty supportive of the mod community. With with it now going on to Steam, we now have the Steam Workshop. So mods will be easier to use, and I'm excited to see all of the mods that come out. Currently, for Men of War Assault Squad, German Soldiers mod and a couple other mods are pretty big and fan favorites. So I'm really excited to see how mod support goes in, especially when it's paired up with the Steam Workshop, where all you have to do is simply click subscribe and you now have a new mod. So it's going to be really fun. But basically, this whole experience system, skilled players will progress quicker and newer players won't be overwhelmed with all the choices of different units. Now, they said that all the core units that you need to win a game will be available. Unique units, and they um, mentioned specifically Motorcycle, Jeep, and King Tiger, wouldn't be available you'd have to unlock those and that simply the more you play the more more new units you unlock so for a new player it streamlines the selection process to more simple and kind of more essential units with you having to work harder and play more in order to unlock all of the rarer and more unique units this also is allowing them to basically come up with new units as this game develops over the course of a few years. So another thing about Men of War from Men of War and Men of War Assault Squad is basically all you really had to play for was your win-loss record and things of that nature and your overall rank. So if you're getting steamrolled, 
all you had to do was quit and you could pop into another game. Well, now this experience system, if you quit out of a game earlier prior to its finishing, you will lose all of the experience that you had earned in that specific battle. So basically, even if you're losing a battle, you still have something to gain. You no longer have to be, okay, I've already lost the battle, it's time to hop into another one. You can now fight and see how many more units you can take out, how many much more experience you can get, so that you can level up a little quicker and unlock some of those rare and special units. At first I was a little skeptical of it, but of this system, but I think it encourages two things. The first of which is a better community. Um, people won't quit out simply because they're losing, and it doesn't award simply a win you need to have a win in order to basically be successful or whatever you have other goals lesser goals and things of that nature obviously your points will be a little higher if you do win but if you lose you can still do rather well and unlock cool things so it kind of gives you that accomplishment factor that many games and systems use in terms of achievements and things of that like so I like that many people will stay into the game longer than they would have and this will ensure a better community in the long run I also like that this experience system is only for the competitive multiplayer and not for custom battles or uh, any of the mods or anything like that now another key factor that they're implementing is matchmaking option so you can see in this screenshot right here they have matchmaking host game and join game now obviously host game and join game you could create a custom battle or things like that but if you just wanted to hop in you simply select matchmaking they now have a matchmaking service so um, in my early days of Men of War Assault Squad I would hop into a game and since I had no rank or I was a private at one point I would get kicked a lot and it was very difficult to get into games and actually get the experience you needed to increase that rank well now matchmaking kinda avoids all of that you can get into games quicker, get into battles quicker, and another key thing that they're implementing, obviously, by going through Steam with Men of War Assault Squad 2, is that they're avoiding the old system of GameSpy. Granted, Assault Squad came out many, many years ago, and the gaming climate online was far, far different then, but now Steam is dominating it, and now we will see Assault Squad 2 on Steam. So you simply log in, it uses your Steam account, you won't have to set up any more accounts through 1C, or Men of War or GameSpy or anything like that, you simply use Steam. So very excited for that. And matchmaking overall should be far more improved. The time in between you getting out of a game and wanting to get into the next one will be very, very dramatically decreased. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, as I said earlier, the Steam Workshop is going to be huge for this game. Um, mod support will keep people playing this game long long after it's launched. Um, I know a lot of people still play the German Soldiers mod is probably the most well-known one. If you have some of your favorites let us all know because I'm always willing to check out some more. Specifically for me I'm looking for a good World War One mod. Anyway so reiterating the key points is that there's a new experience system which will be basically good for new players, good for experienced players, good for matchmaking, and as well as good for keeping people into games and not quitting early so you have a much better overall experience the launch date is February 20th 2014 and closed beta should come out January 16th now that I've covered all that I want to go into some screenshot analysis of the new pictures I have shown a lot of other pictures and analyzed what units and stuff are in them and if you want to check that out, you can check the video description below or the video outro where I'll have a nice link for you right there. All you got to do is click on the video. So let's go forward. Here is a nice King Tiger, Koenig's Tiger, which I believe the literal translation is Bengal Tiger. But we all know it as the King Tiger, an absolute beast. Here we have an M4 Sherman. I mean, if you just look at the level of detail, granted, this is what... 2014 and I believe it came out in 2009 maybe was Assault Squad or 2011 multiple years later we can expect much higher quality rendering on these models and this Sherman is looking crisp you can even see the individual 50 caliber bullets right there all of the different the commanders 
cupola right there, antenna, the grating on the engine block in the back, even a hatchet and some shovels and some jerry cans and stuff like that. Whole mount of machine guns. Level detail is superb. And that will allow you to identify stuff even easier and just make it pretty crisp, which is something that is kind of like a bar minimum. We would need that in Assault Squad 2, but it's good to know that we have that. And here is a big old British heavy Churchill tank, and it is looking gorgeous. I think this is a rather unique style tank and how its treads are kind of encased with that side armor right there. Really, really nice tank. Now here's a screenshot they have, and I found these on their Facebook page. So if you want to find these for yourself, you can check the Facebook page. I'll, I'll have a link in the video description below. And if I forget, remind me, because all these links I'm promising, it's easy to forget. But one notable thing is if you look on your unit selection tab, now you have the units and it tells you how much manpower it costs. Those con on conscripts, for example, cost 60 and the regular infantry cost 150. There's also just, if you look in the lower left, the tabbing system for the units you have looks a little different. Um, and then the HUD overall, like if you look on the top, the user interface is a little crisper, a little different. And uh, it's looking pretty nice. The maps are looking pretty similar. It's just more crisp, but it's that same Men of War Assault Squad experience we all know and love. So moving on to the next one, we have this desert map. A new map, three capture points relatively close in an urban center in the desert. And we have some Germans here. Uh, spearheaded by that Panzer IV with uh, an assault gun and it looks like shirts and on the side of it. What's selected is an anti-tank crew right there. And um, if you look on the infantry units that they have selected, there's a few more individual units you can select right below the available AT rifle, AT infantry, and machine gunner. There, it looks like there's an automatic rifle another Panzer Shrek, and then another machine gun. So I'm not sure if those are elite infantry or what that you can purchase individually. And then if you look to the right above the unit selection tabs on the right side and below the mini-map, you can see this new uh, kind of experience bar where it shows you your level. Um, I believe that might be... Oh, they changed it up. So instead of the manpower points, you can see it right there. You have 354 out of 1,109. So it's pretty interesting. And I believe it might be showing your manpower per second. But I'm not entirely sure. And then it shows how much command points you have available. 87 out of 100, <clears throat> which would explain all of the different tabs in the lower left. Now, I have been told that each individual in individual unit will have an individual kill statistic. So if the unit's still alive and he's killed six units, it'll show that. I'm not entirely sure where, but that's something kind of cool, because every now and then in these battles, you have just one unit that just stands out as a hero and is slaughtering stuff, and it's kind of cool to see exactly how many units he's killed. Um, so overall, there's these subtle little improvements on... The Men of War Assault Squad basically gameplay. Now, these two units are two of my favorite. This is probably my favorite screenshot of the newer screenshots that I'm going to be covering. Here we have a pair of Flak Panzer IVs, both based off the Panzer IV chassis. So when you look at the chassis, they look identical. But on the top, their turrets are different. On the left, we have the Verbal Wind with quad 20mm Flak 38s. The Flak 38 is also a favorite of many German commanders out there. <clears throat> and on the right, we have the Ostwind. And this bad boy is armed with a 3.7 centimeter Flak 43, which gives it a little better range and also some pretty impressive stopping power, which would be good against infantry, light vehicles, and even some lighter to medium armored tanks. Um... Quick note of speculation by me personally is that there are a couple of other Flak Panzers based off the Panzer IV chassis, notably the Mobile Wagon, but then especially the Kugelblitz, which is a really impressive, pretty powerful uh, Panzer IV with two 30mm guns on the top. Now, they have said that this, this new experience system allows them to 
put in new units in the future so even if you've unlocked everything you may go back to wanting to unlock some of the new units and have some of the rarer and more unique units the Kugel Blitz would be a perfect example of this so it'd be fun to see these things kind of implemented in the future anyway finishing us off on these pictures is the SDKFC 251 or the Zonderkraftfahrzeug um, which is basically a special purpose vehicle this is kind of uh, a pretty cool German half track and it kind of goes back to my speculation about could we get more versions of these kinds of vehicles in future updates and stuff I would love to see the SDKFC 250 which is basically a smaller version of the 251 and then there's also the SDKFC uh, 251 slash 9 which is the Schürzen Panzerwagen or also friendly known as the Stummel because it has the same 7.5 millimeter centimeter low velocity assault gun that the Stug 3 used so it'd be fun to see these kinds of things implemented in the game in the future I'm a big fan of this game I think it has a lot of potential Men of War Assault Squad is my favorite World War II RTS to date and one of my favorite RTS's ever. So, I mean, just look at the level of detail there. You can see the fire extinguisher in the back, which you probably could get out and maybe even put out fires with. You have jerry cans, some helmets, some extra just gears, tracks, and stuff like that. Even a hatchet over that front left tire right there. And then if the vehicle gets disabled, one of the cool things about Men of War Assault Squad is you can grab out that MG-42 and have an infantry guy run around with it. Overall, it's just it's just such a great game. It's so unique. So I'm really looking forward to this. Anyway, if you're just chiming in now, you can check out a lot of my Men of War Assault Squad gameplay videos. Just And if you're new, make sure to subscribe to the channel and pull the trigger on the like button as we are all very excited for Men of War Assault Squad 2. Anyway, check this video outro for a link to my first preview video on Assault Squad 2. I thank you all for watching. My name is Baron and I am signing out. So now we're going to be talking about the different screenshots and right here it looks like we have some T-34 85s and a KV-1 and it looks like three out of these four tanks are detracked. One kind of really cool game mechanic that is unique to the Men of War series is that you, the tanks have damage models and then their tracks can be detracted and also repaired. You can also repair damaged enemy tanks and use them for yourself. I'm gonna be too scared of him. Is there any spot I can penetrate? I'll, I'll try and get any gun mantlet? Tiger. Here's a gun mantlet. Machine gun port. Oh, <laughs> wow. What a shot! What? <laughs> That's amazing. I've never seen that happen. Wow. That, I mean, That's that was exactly what I needed him to do. What? All right. Panzer Free is dead. Yes, sir. Bye, Panzer Free. Oh, we got a Hetzer now.